All right. Hey, Vikings fans, welcome in to another episode of the Skull Hop. We're just a couple of dudes from Iowa. We like drinking beer. We like talking about the Vikings. I'm Evan. And I'm Austin. And we've got a special guest over here joining us for the second time, Forrest, the Bears fan. The so Bears welcome. Fan. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the second time. You're, you're always welcome on the Skull Hop, Forrest. We appreciate, we appreciate having you here. Uh, we don't like having you here when your team beats our team, but you're we like you better than we like the Bears. So I'd, I'd like to take credit for that, but <laughs> nothing to do with it <laughs> besides my rooting. Yeah. So. All right. Did you have anything to do with the fact that they didn't score a touchdown? Um, no, that that's basically the Bears' philosophy, I think. So That's, that's fair. That's fair. Well, we got to talk about the beer we're drinking. Yeah. So uh, we got? hopefully you've already checked out our TikTok where we did our first taste of the beer. Um, but tonight we've got the Big Grove Arms Race. That's what it is, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. They describe it as an American strong pale ale. Um and if I were to describe it to listeners who haven't tried it, think like, like a, think of like a citrusy IPA and how it's like a summer. It kind of makes you feel like summer. This is like an amber e IPA that kind of fits really good in the fall time. Um, and because of that, I thought it fit really well with both of our palates because you're you really like the ambers. I do too, but you're. You're big into the amber, darker beers, yep. and I'm big into the IPAs, so this kind of hits the best of both worlds. It sure does. What are you thinking of it? I'm I'm liking it a lot. It yeah. might find its way into kind of my like top 10, maybe. Mm-hmm. Forrest, what do you think of it? It's it's a classic uh, IPA, I'd say. It's one of those that are is made, I think, year-round by Big Grove, so, I mean, indulge all year round, but, but mm-hmm. you, you do have a good point. It's more of those that fall taste, so. Yeah. Uh, and just to remind everybody who, obviously everyone's listened to every single one of our episodes so far, uh, and thank you guys for doing that, by the way, that's really helpful. But in case you missed Forrest's first episode, uh, we mentioned how Forrest is not only a Bears fan, he's also a Michigan Wolverines fan, probably a bigger Wolverines fan than a Bears much, fan. Much bigger. But he's also a bit of a beer connoisseur. Uh, he has He's dabbled in the, the brewing hobby, he's a pretty good beer brewer. Uh, but he has really good beer opinions and opinions that I respect highly. So wow, wow. if Forrest says a beer is good, you can take that as concrete word. Well, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like put up to a pedestal that yeah. I can't, can't get up to. But uh, <laughs> no, I have have had a lot of beers and uh, a lot of beers with Austin, a few with Evan. And uh, I enjoy having, having beers on the Skull Hop. So. Yeah. Well, Skull. Oh, can we reach each yeah. other here? Skull. For us, we're just going to pretend. Yeah. Uh, but we'll talk about effort. this beer a little bit more towards the end after we've had a couple. And uh, so far, I think we all enjoy it a lot. Good job, Big Grove. You brought me something. I did. Listeners, it was Evan's birthday recently, within the last week, since the last episode we recorded. It and, was on uh, Thanksgiving. And I found a really good deal on something I thought Evan would enjoy quite a bit. And uh, I left it up to him whether it would be on the podcast or not, and he said, uh, "Let's do it on the let's do it live. Let's do it on the podcast." So, um, whenever you're ready, Ev, go right, ahead and open up your birthday. Let's present. do this. You did not have to get me anything. Oh, I know, I know. I'm a little worried now because you've set a precedent, and your birthday's around the Super Bowl, so <laughs> nobody nobody Super can ever Bowl get tickets me a better. Yeah. Are not going to be a gift for <laughs> me. I would never. Ex- I don't think I would accept that. Unless you said they were free. Oh, oh, oh. oh, look at this. All right. He has I think, pulled I out. I think I know what this is. He has pulled out the the present. Um, he's unwrapping the the actual wrapping around it. Um, describe this as you, as you pull it out and open it up. Well, I think this comes from our many conversations about how I don't have a jersey yeah. currently. Yeah. A, an adult size jersey. Sure. So... Uh, I will say the one you're holding is uh, large adult size, uh, so maybe a, a, a shade big, but it will fit nicely on, or over top like a, a oh, sweatshirt. Yeah. And it's um, a Thielen jersey. Yes. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure we talked about what jersey 
we would have if we could pick one. And I think I said Adam Thielen. Yep. In one of our first episodes, it may have been our first episode. For all I know, it was our first like un- unreleased could, episode. It could have been the yeah the one that we never published. Yeah. But so. yeah, I did say if I had to get one Vikings jersey, and it was before he was traded. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I think we've only ever recorded after Thielen has been a a, Panther. away from the team. Maybe... Not already on the Panthers, but I think our first episode. Anyways, well, this is this is pretty awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, so just to let myself off the hook a little bit, it as you know, fans may know, uh, jerseys are very expensive. But once a player leaves a team, those jerseys get a lot less expensive. So this definitely entered the realm of budget of getting a friend a gift. So <laughs> so don't feel bad about that. Um, this is great. It's a little big, but wear it proudly when you wear it oh, or I, display. I it sure proudly. will. And That's uh, awesome. happy birthday. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Happy belated birthday. That is super cool. It'd be awesome to get it signed. Oh, that would be cool. Adam Thielen, if you're listening, uh, we, we have something for you to sign that we won't sell on eBay. <laughs> I say we. It's Evan. We'll put it in the, the Skull Cave here. Yeah, the Skull Cave. You're adopting the name. I love yeah. it. The Skull Cave. The That's skull what cave. this is known as now. <laughs> so I'm in a little shocked that you had never had, or you had had a jersey not as an adult. Interesting. As a child, I had, and I still have, a Dante Culpepper jersey. Oh, okay. And I have that Robert Smith okay. signed jersey that I've had forever. Yep. Evan says that because he's pointing behind us. Um, if you're listening to us audio, uh, you won't see it, but we are releasing this video on YouTube and I believe Spotify. Yeah, Spotify and YouTube you yeah. can watch. So if episodes. you check us out there, you can clearly see the Skull Cave in all its glory. Our pretty faces, but also Evan's awesome display case, which uh, features a Robert Smith jersey. Yeah. I am not a Vikings fan, and it is a very cool <laughs> showcase of, of Vikings uh, memorabilia. So, Oh, yeah. We're only hoping to add to it as we go. Yeah. Like so. Kirk Cousins, we could probably find a spot for a Lombardi trophy. Oh, we sure could. Um, ours would be replica, but <laughs> who knows? Is there a Lombardi for podcasts? I don't know. We should make one. We can declare ourselves the Lombardi podcast winners. I think that's a little premature. <laughs> but Come on, man. But okay. <laughs> we'll make one up. I think you got to win the Lombardi trophy to uh, reference it. But Well, we're on let's, our way. Let's, let's stop there. <laughs> so. All right. Well... <laughs> Austin and I don't really want to talk about what happened on Monday night, Mm -hmm. but it's kind of our uh, typical episode to talk about the Vikings game in retrospect, as well as look ahead to next week and seeing as there is no game this coming week for either the Bears or the Vikings. They're both on buys. Yep. I guess we have to talk about it, at least for a little bit. I just want to start this off on a a good note. I want to say I was right. You were right. I you was did right. predict this game. <laughs> uh, preseason, we had, I think it was episode three, and maybe we even mentioned it on episode two. Uh, we picked every game of the season, and we talked about our locks to win and our locks to lose, just our personal opinion on the games that they were for sure going to win and the ones they'd for sure lose. Uh, I can't off the top of my head think about the lock to win that I chose, but I know the lock to lose was this Bears game. So I take as much pride as I can in correctly guessing the lock to win or you, lock to lose. You've only picked one game incorrectly, right? That's true. Uh, according to my preseason picks, the only game I have picked incorrectly so far was week one against the Buccaneers. I said the Vikings would win that one. They've lo- they lost that game. But other than that, I'm, I think you I'm are, perfect. Yeah, you're game for game other than the Bucks. So you were picking your team to be 6-6 six and six at this point? Uh, yeah, I believe so. We have it right wow. behind me. 7-5, I, I, I think. Uh, oh, because yes, the one, yeah. the one mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Okay. And I actually, I think wow. I was a little more optimistic. I was like 8-3 and three at this point going into the bye week. So. Yep. Yep. The coin was very optimistic. <laughs> it had us at like 9-3. Two or the coin had us on like a nine game win streak yeah. at one point. So. That was that was fun. Go back and listen to that one. I think it was episode three. I was gonna say, Austin, I mean, I think you had more faith that the Vikings were gonna lose <laughs> than most Bear fans that the Bears were gonna win this game. So Well, heading into the game, you know, a week ago today, I was I mean, I 
it was convinced, you know, this was going to be a Vikings win. Um, Evan on early on in the live stream, I think even before the game officially started said he predicted the Vikings to win 28, 14. And I didn't disagree with him, but man, the Vikings took offense to you picking them to win. They, uh, <laughs> they did not win 24, 14. They scored one touchdown and the bears didn't score any touchdowns. And they won, and which is hard to game. do. Which isn't. I mean, that I'm not first, even mad. First That's time impressive. This I mean, <laughs> I don't know what the stats are on that. Even not just this season, but overall in general, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's not an easy task. Yeah. So considering weather was not a factor, I mean, no. So it was just uh, gravity. The astronaut fell back to Earth, and. Uh, <laughs> the Vikings were terrible. Yeah. I don't want to take too much credit away from the Bears because they won. But, man, from my view, it's just the Vikings couldn't get out of their own way. They couldn't make correct decisions. I mean, yeah, the Bears had four interceptions, but Dobbs made those not the hardest interceptions in the world. It could have been five. It probably should have been way I more mean, than the four. one that jalen johnson dropped oh yeah a pick six pretty it looked like is that the one where fields was in the background and looked like he was it might have dunk? been it, yeah it, it, yeah <laughs> it was almost the i wouldn't say the easiest but he he read the route and it almost looked like he he had eyes for the end zone before he made the catch so yeah which i mean who wouldn't i yeah. i would if i was not in my physical shape and in the ability to play in the nfl yeah. i'd be super excited but yeah i it was just a frustrating game as a Vikings fan. I'm sure it was frustrating a lot as a Bears fan. Uh, so, so yes. I mean, you, it's it's not what I, we don't expect as a Bears fan. I mean, to to go in, you know, you're expecting to lose first of all. I mean, with the season we're having, but you, you had this this idea that we we're gonna at least be competitive with with the way we played it against Detroit, you know, the mm-hmm. week before we looked decent. Mm-hmm. Defense looks like it's it's definitely coming together. I mean, um, but in typical Bears fashion, you know, especially when you guys scored that go-ahead touchdown, um, <laughs> it felt like another, okay, the Bears are doing this on purpose because <laughs> they want draft position. I mean, that's... I think that's the only normal thing you can think of. Mm-hmm. How do you play so dominant but only come up with, I mean, in the end, 12 points, but let alone nine points when you guys took the lead? It just it felt like, how how is that possible? So Yeah. Somebody in our live stream, was it Joey or JK, was saying – Kept saying over and over, Bears are gonna bear. Yeah, it was uh, it was J.K. JK. He's a, a Browns fan. He's been in both of our live streams so far. But yeah, he just kept saying, "Don't worry, like the Bears are gonna bears. Like eventually they're gonna they're gonna throw it away." And Justin Fields, RB one, he fumbled twice in critical moments, and that last fumble he had should have been the sealer, if sure. not for KOC's very blatant poor. I, I describe it as his ability to like play the game of football. Like the actual chess, you know, eye in the sky game of football. He's he's not great at that. He can analyze every play, he can read defenses, he can tell the quarterback exactly what to do. But when it comes to clock management and timeouts and like strategy of what plays to call where, it's showing that in critical moments that's a weak weak point of his game and he needs to get better at that i would say too <clears throat> there were a lot of penalties down the stretch for the bears oh throughout the whole game I'd, i mean and and i know you know i i didn't debate you know one one call that the rest made obviously or blatant pass interference holding calls on on the bears it just was funny that the majority, at least in the first half of your first downs, came from Bears penalties. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just, it just was a, one of those type of games where we we had your number, but we couldn't we we just couldn't couldn't come up with how to stop you completely. So mm-hmm. our best option was take take the penalty yards and then live for another series. So mm-hmm. I think if I remember right, the Vikings had three total first downs at the half. Two of them were yes, exactly. on penalties, and one exactly. of them was earned, and it was a rushing first down. And I think it was which is crazy. Was it Dobbs that rushed for like 
Oh, I don't remember. Madison or no, had Madison a 21-yard rush at yeah, one point. Madison had a big breakout run, I remember. But yep. anyways, um, yeah, I agree with you too, Austin. And KOC really struggled to call the game. And it wasn't just in the fourth quarter. I think it was all game long. I don't think he knew how to respond to Dobbs struggling yeah. like he did. Mm-hmm. So, And I think I said it on the live stream. It almost seemed like... Because that, that first game that Dobbs played, he didn't start, but he played a lot of the, most of the Atlanta game. And after that week, they were kind of saying that, you know, in the earpiece, KOC would tell Dobbs what words to say to the rest of the huddle, and then they would break. And as they were going up to the, up to the line of scrimmage in his earpiece still, KOC would be telling Dobbs like, okay, this is what that play means. And this is what you're going to see. I wonder if, I mean, Dobbs has been there what a month now something like that I wonder if that has kind of gone away a little bit because you would assume Dobbs is at least a little bit more comfortable with the playbook obviously not all the way good you know you wouldn't expect that a month in but maybe there's something he he's a smart guy like maybe there's something he has learned and they've gotten to some sort of a a rapport on like okay you you know this now so we don't have to be as detailed in that pre-snap earpiece. Um, total speculation on my part. I'm just guessing, but maybe they would have had to go back to that. Like, all right, let me hold your hand on everything again. Yeah, I, I would say it could be part of that. I also say that there's now, you know, three and a half, whatever, four games of film on on Dobbs with mm-hmm. the Vikings. I think the Bears knew that they wanted to cover the edge. And they did that pretty much. I mean, you didn't see these breakout runs by Dobbs, you know, to extend plays or, or, or get a first down type thing. So I think that has an advantage. Um, so I think teams are, are starting to, not that you didn't have film on Dobbs before, but with a new team, you still have to reanalyze how they're going to use that quarterback. So exactly. Um, I think, I think it worked to the, the bears advantage to have that much game film on that. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, if you know you're going up against Josh Dobbs and his way of being special is by, you know, extending plays or getting out of danger by running around a little bit when he has to, you're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. Just like you know if you're going up against a team that has a really good running back, you're going to focus on taking that running back away as much as you can. Uh, To your point, Dobbs had two rushes for 11 yards. Yep. Um, And that doesn't even count the, I don't know how many times he was sacked. I don't know how many times he tried to run and there just wasn't anything there, but officially he had two for 11, Um, which it seems like that was his superpower. And once you take that away, once you get in his face a little bit, some of those interceptions were, he just got scared and threw it up. Yeah, it was definitely, it was hard to watch at times because we just hadn't seen that from Josh Dobbs as a Viking Mm -hmm. in those first two games. I mean, we just saw this electric player who could run and throw and he was, he was fine in Jordan Addison. He was fine in TJ Hawkinson. He like just developed this instant chemistry with those guys. And on Monday night against the bears, it's like all of that magic just kind of faded away. And he didn't have that same chemistry. TJ dropped a couple, I think in the first half, Mm -hmm. he couldn't connect with Addison at all. That and first pass attempt, that was deflating. Ugh. That long attempt that, to that, Addison. That, I, I, I truly respect the play call on that. And the fact of the matter is it didn't work. And then you guys really didn't take another big shot like that. Mm-hmm. No. And I, I couldn't believe. I was expecting at least a couple more like that, um, especially like on a after you get a first down type play, take a big shot down there. I think – I was just amazed, first of all, that you didn't. And then I think this was the first game you really – I mean, you could say it during the Denver game, but this is where you missed Justin Jefferson. I mean, to have another another outlet to for yeah. him to go to. Um, well, and to take those big shots, those plays take a couple more seconds to develop. They do. And you said it earlier for us, the Bears – I think – the defense as a whole played really well, but the defensive line just gave the Vikings offensive line and in turn Josh Dobbs fits. Um, I think it was, I don't know who was saying it in the chat, 
JK, I think, was saying. Maybe it was that other Bears fan that showed up in our in our live stream. It was not was me. Saying, it was not me. <laughs> um, they were saying like Montez Sweat has made a bunch of difference for the Bears defensive line. That was obvious. I and, I, I, I wrote that in in my my side notes is the Bears defense looked strong the last couple weeks. I mean, yeah, they're one and one, but you can't deny it. they gave the Lions some fits. Um, they're all healthy. It looks like pretty much now. And and adding sweat to to this, I think I think right now I mean Ryan Poles looks like he's trying to to do something for for next year. So yeah. you have to respect the move. Yeah. So. That sweat trade initially, I was like, what? Like I didn't quite understand it. Obviously, he's a good player, but it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, obviously, that's a move for the Bears for the future. Yeah, it'll help this season, but that's more of a building. And then when they sign him to the long term contract afterwards made a little bit more sense but yeah you're right the Lions game and then especially against the Vikings he's showcasing that he's a really good player and it it showed up on the field against the Vikings and the Lions but I don't know Brian O'Neill that may have been his worst game all season but that's because Montez Sweat was just eating him alive um you don't have a JJ and a Jordan Addison, and really no other receiver stepped up. Brandon Powell, the few good pass plays, seemed to be him catching the ball. He seemed um, to make not just catching the ball. He he seemed to be doing some good key blocks though too for a few plays at mm-hmm. least. So I would say, I mean, from a value perspective, I mean, yeah, or late on in the second half, Hawkinson was was vital. But mm-hmm. let's see, Powell, Powell, I think for you guys was was a, a good great player to have on the field. So I noticed too, um CJ Ham was in the game quite a bit. A little bit more. And I think that was for blocking purposes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was because Sweat and the rest of the Bears defensive line were really getting after it. And so that was kind of a like, well, this is a last ditch effort to see if we can't figure something out and it never really worked. Even yeah. throwing our, our fullback in there just didn't didn't pan out but yep i mean credit to the bears they they figured something out they they game playing really well in the defense the bears it was a defensive game all around because the yeah. vikings best phase of the ball was their defense i mean when you end up with a 12 10 game and <laughs> the winning team doesn't have a touchdown yeah. i mean <laughs> and, and on top of that um the bears kicker first kick was missed that's true it. so <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was missed and uh the other one i think the only like what did they make the red zone twice maybe but that one was obviously right within the 20 that's when fields fumbled you mm. know and blew blew a chance to to get the two possession lead so mm-hmm. so yeah credit to both teams defenses i mean they they came out and played so yeah. Well, let's shift gears and let's talk a little bit about the quarterback situation. Obviously, the Vikings are in a little bit more of a conundrum than the Bears. The Bears have Justin Fields back now. So. Oh, I got words, but go ahead with the dots. <laughs> and we can definitely talk about the Bears quarterback situation because I think there are still some question marks there. Um, but the Vikings situation with Dobbs playing as poorly as he did on Monday night really raises some big question marks going into the bye week. And you've got Jaron Hall healthy now. I saw that they released Sean Mannion off the practice squad. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's really between Nick Mullins, who's now back from IR, Jaron Hall, who's now healthy from his concussion, and Josh Dobbs. Those, yeah. are, your, those are your options at quarterback moving yeah. forward. Well, I was a little surprised that they didn't make an in-game quarterback change for the Vikings. I mean, after you throw four interceptions, I don't know how how you can have any con- I don't care if Tom Brady is out there and he throws his fourth, like obviously something is going on. He's not in it. You need to pull him out. You need to try to change the look somehow. So, I I'm of the mindset you have to make the change. I, and I think it's understood. Uh, obviously they haven't come out and said everything KFC the most he said was a reporter asked him like what are you thinking about the quarterback position and he said something to the tune of we're going to look at at all options 
Um, so that tells you right there, they're at least open to it. He didn't say, oh, immediately right now it's still Dobbs team or anybody. He didn't name a name. Um, but I think they got to make the change. And I almost don't care who it is because it's either Mullins or Hall. And I think Hall in his two drives showed you something. But to that point, Job or Josh Dobbs showed you something too until he didn't. Um, and Nick Mullins, he's got some experience starting outside of the Vikings and then some experience in the system with the Vikings. So I think either could be a good choice. They just got to make a change. Dobbs doesn't have it. I did see something on Twitter. I forget who said this, and I should have written it down or screenshotted it or something. But somebody out there in the Twitterverse today said something along the lines of, you know, we forget that Kirk Cousins had, uh, I think it was seven picks and five fumbles in the first two games of the season. Wow. Or something like that. I may have my numbers crossed. I don't I don't know if you ever had more. Uh, oh, I guess you said picks and fumbles. Uh, yeah, n- never mind. <laughs> uh, but I, I, if that stat is accurate, which I didn't take the time to look it up, I just believe everything that I see on the internet because <laughs> it's the internet and it's true. But um, if that's truly the case, um, I mean, that averages out over a couple of games to be about what Dobbs had in one game. So... <laughs> I don't know. You you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt. And obviously Josh Dobbs is not Kirk Cousins, has way less experience and is a much different quarterback than Kirk is. But I don't know. I, I'm just playing devil's advocate a little bit. I agree with you. I think a change should be made, um, or at least uh, they should take a good long look at that quarterback position they over this to. extended bye week. Oh yeah, and make the best decision possible. Mm-hmm. It, that's it's a great point with the the stats. I mean, I didn't realize that either. I mean, I guess as an outsider, if you're a Vikings fan, I mean, besides the the destruction against Chicago, I mean, Dobbs has pretty much won you at least one game. I mean, the Atlanta game, I, I'd say, you know, he 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 solely won you that game. I mean. The Denver game, I mean, yeah, he he definitely could have played better, um, but I don't think he played poor. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And then obviously he won the other game. I forget who was the the, the Saints. The Saints, thank mm-hmm. you. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. That's a yeah. tough one. I, I, and I don't say this like just because we got four picks off of him, but uh, I would I would challenge that you keep him. You know, at least let him play a little bit especially with Jefferson's coming back. See see what kind of chemistry, I mean, you got. I I think you got more of experience with Dobbs than you got obviously with Hall. I mean, he's a rookie, so it, yeah. Uh if if you're really aiming for for that playoff spot, I think I think Dobbs is your best shot at it. So, that's just an outsider's perspective. Well, we we take your ideas and we we crumple uh, them up, crumple them up, <laughs> throw them away. <laughs> yeah, that's how I thought. Um, to your point, though, about Dobbs and his play in these last few games, if you really look at it, he came in in relief of Jaron Hall because of concussion in the Atlanta game early on, and he looked rough. I mean, really bad from the safety to he had a fumble that looked like an interception, but either way, it was a turnover. Um, he had another fumble. Another after fumble. That. It looked really rough early on, and then something clicked. I think it was his mobility, and he just played f it football, and had some really good blocks, and lucked into some stuff, and got really excited, and the momentum was on the way. So, probably the second half of the Atlanta game, he looked decent, and it was really fun, and they won. And then the next game was the Saints, and they came out, and I think in the first half he had something like 220 passing yards. Um, a touchdown or two, rushing touch. He looked amazing the first half, and it was a lot of fun. It was the pasture knots back again. It was exciting. Um, and then the second half, which kind of gets overlooked because the Vikings ultimately won, but the second half, Dobbs didn't look so great. He only had like 40 yards passing in the second half. I don't know his rushing numbers, but it wasn't it wasn't great. If he played both halves like he played the second half, he would have been benched long ago. Um, and then the Broncos game after the Saints game, 
we're still on the Josh Dobbs high because his overall Saints numbers looked pretty good because of that first half and the win. And then he starts to show some cracks. But it's okay because it's on the road and, you know, there's a little bit more tape out there and the Broncos have uh, butthole eyes uh, quarterback with some pedigree and, you know, the Broncos Coach. get paid too. Coach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, not quarterback. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then – he comes and lays this egg against the Bears, and now you're starting, you know, the the high of the Atlanta game and the first half of the Saints game are wearing off, and we're really seeing what, what he is, I believe, and I think so, that's so why. So you're not one of those people that – I mean, they, they projected it. I think they said Dobbs before this game was 0-4 and – the night games, the time <laughs> games. Well, so as Vikings fans, they, they projected this, and and you know darn well with with the Kirk Cousins, you know mojo. Yep. That that maybe maybe it's, maybe it's not a quarterback thing. Maybe it's a Vikings thing. I don't know. We're no stranger to that narrative. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we know that narrative well. Yeah, exactly. But to your point, I know you're playing devil's advocate a little bit. Dobbs was not the only player on the field. He wasn't the only one out there with a job to do. We mentioned Brian O'Neill. The whole offensive line in general didn't look great. Uh, receivers weren't there. Like, KOC could have coached better. Really, it's just the – I mean, down to Ryan Wright, the punter, he didn't. He has not looked great all year. It's just they've been winning, and it's been masked a little bit. So – it's not all Dobbs' fault, but when you're the quarterback, you get all the blame and all the credit, and right now he's getting a lot of blame. That, that's the position. But I go back to, I think, Evan, maybe maybe either one of you guys said it early in the podcast, is why didn't you make a quarterback change? I mean, especially, yeah, four, four interceptions. I mean, what, three of them maybe in the first half of just like I, – I couldn't believe that they want to at least try something new. Um, yeah. It, it just kind of blew my mind that I didn't see Jaron Hall either in, in, in that game. So, but it's not, it's not, not my, uh, not my problem to have. <laughs> so. We'll see what happens here. I mean, it's, it's nice that the bye week is here and KOC and everyone else can kind of take some time, look at some film um, and figure some stuff out. I think KOC needs to take some time and do a little self audit as well of his own coaching and play calling and, um, examine some of those late game, uh, you know, we're up by a score or we're up by a thin margin and, you know, w what he's doing in those moments because the saints game slipped away or almost slipped away. Uh, the Broncos game could have been won. The Bears game could have been won. Um, it, it's it's been frustrating. It, it, it's it's actually kind of amazing that the games and, and I know it's all about when you play a team and and who's injured. And I'm not taking away from your your wins at all. You you, you have to win when who you play and on a certain date. But it's it's kind of crazy that if you were to tell me that you'd win against the 49ers and and and. And I would even throw Saints in there because they they were a team you know that I think could have could have won. But and then you lose to and now the Broncos on the rise, but the Broncos and then you lose to the Bears. It, I would have flipped those those four games and said you lose the other two and win win those. I, I just it's football's a funny thing. So yeah, yeah, definitely is. Well, even the Broncos. I mean, you go back to their game against the Dolphins where they. They let the Dolphins score oh, seventy points. Goals. Like, how do you oh. how do you win any games when and, you let and, a team? And ever since that is like, that's what the the slap in face they needed to mm -hmm. start start actually playing football. So yeah, yeah, they figured it out for sure, or at least in the last handful of games. I mean, they're what five wins in a row. I mean, jeez, yeah, they were one and five, and now they're six and five. <laughs> what about the Bears quarterback situation? How do you feel? Okay, like yeah, that's I'll keep be... it keep it short, but uh. I mean, I've said on the last podcast, I'm not a, a Justin Fields fan. I'm not, not sold on him. I wasn't sold on when we drafted the, the dude. Yes, I mean, the dude is athletic as all get out. You can see it in, in the game we played against you. He extended plays, hit rolling out of the pocket. And then you see stupid plays. I mean, everyone fumbles eventually, but to to have him – be aware of the situation, especially the one on like the twenty-five yard line. Ball security. All you, 
you have the field goal. What are you doing? So, mm-hmm. and and what hurts I think the most as as I've seen Fields play is it doesn't seem like he cares. Like when he does something stupid or makes a mistake, he's like, oh well. <laughs> and and I understand it's an emotional game, and I don't want him to be so upset that it impacts his play for the rest of the game, but. He, it just doesn't seem like he has any emotion. You you look at replays when he he uh, fumbles or makes a stupid mistake and he walks out the field with because he always takes his helmet off for some odd reason, <laughs> and you just see it on his face that he doesn't care, and 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 it speaks volumes. And I don't know if it's just that he doesn't care. He knows he's going to get picked up by another team somewhere. <laughs> Maybe that's what he wants. I don't know. Well, as a Vikings fan, I hope he has at least one more game kind of like this where it looks like he's decent so that the Bears get soft or cold feet on drafting another guy. Well, I was was going to mention this at the end of the podcast of what's next, but (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll just say it right now is Ryan Poles has got a – it's it's an audition for for Justin Fields, I think, for the rest of the season. Ryan Poles has got to pull some big data and is this this his guy or not because – there's a lot of good quarterbacks coming for this draft. Not that I want another project, but if you're gonna invest in in the Justin Fields game, you're gonna do it. So maybe um, the Bears can draft your guy JJ McCarthy, and uh, then you can revel in how good JJ or hasn't bad even his... tra- he hasn't declared yet. <laughs> He'll obviously declare. He'll declare when <laughs> uh, right after they lose to the Hawkeyes this yeah, this weekend. Whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I'm kidding. I, by the way, no, I want to make no. it clear. I don't. I, I, I will. I will say one thing. Going back to Justin Fields, you, you always reference Austin that he's our RB one. Mm-hmm. Do you know the stats I pulled on on uh, Dobbs on his rushing? He is your number two in the weeks nine through twelve. He has 142 yards, Madison 204, but on week nine he was your leading rusher. Yeah. Oh so yeah. Does absolutely. That make him your RB two. Just throwing it back at you. To that point, I think Dobbs, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. I think he has the second most rushing yards on the team. Uh, he literally may be RB2. So Behind okay. behind Madison, I think he is. And I respect uh, you, you, you calling that out. So. <laughs> Considering you always call Justin Fields RB1. So just, ha- just had to throw that out there for you. At least your you. guy's the starter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely been an interesting quarterback situation for the Bears and the Vikings, mm-hmm. I think. I th- yeah, it, it's it's crazy to think of. I mean, he, at least I think you guys have an idea. Do you want to sign Kirk Cousins another year or two? I mean, uh, you, you hope he recovers from, from this injury as, as 100%. I mean, I'd never like to see a guy go down like that, but uh, you also have to keep that in mind. He's getting older, and will he recover as well, so... Mm-hmm. We saw Aaron Rodgers back on the field today. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> I think I'm going to injure my eyes if I give the full effort into an eye roll that I want to give for that. <laughs> the The Jets literally have a 0.4% chance of making the playoffs. I saw that. He is not coming back if there's no playoff chance. He just wants to... He's gonna he flex. wants to beat the medical odds, and he wants to be the one that, oh, I could have come back. I just, you know, we just weren't in the race anymore, so it didn't make any sense. I was good. If we if we would have made the playoffs, I would have been good. That's what he's going to say on Pat McAfee. He's not coming back. I, I, I would agree. I mean, there's no sense of him coming back and yeah. trying to re-injure yeah. um, on a, you know, he's not going to be 100% anyway, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does make the the storyline for the off season. What does he do? So yeah, super eye roll. Uh, you mentioned Forrest um, signing Kirk after this season, and initially I I wanted that. I I'm a Kirk Cousins fan, but I don't know how much sense it makes. Um, Jared Allen came out. I don't know if it was yesterday or today. Um, he was. I think he was on a podcast or something, but he mentioned like, yeah. When you're 35, 36 like Kirk is and you suffer that kind of an injury in a contract year, that doesn't make any sense to throw even, I mean, a cheap deal to sign Kirk would be like $20 million. 
that would be most of a full contract for a first round quarterback. I mean, I don't I don't think it makes sense numbers wise to bring him back when you just don't know. I mean, well, and he, the idea was, I mean, yeah. You're, there was a reason why you drafted Hall last year. I mean, I, I I guess why draft him if you're gonna just sign Kurt? You know, I I, I just I think the organization at that point, at least during draft day, was yeah, this is Kurt Cousins last year with us, and you always have to get him cheap, obviously. So. Mm-hmm. Evan, for this year, what are your thoughts? Let's assume they make a quarterback change. Who do you think it should be, and who do you want it to be? Well, I mean, at this point, where where we are currently, there there will be a quarterback change. Not to say that uh, I think steering away from what we were talking about for a moment, um, I, I think Kirk could come back. Um, I, I think there is a strong possibility that he does. Um, I know that he's expressed interest in coming back. He wants to retire as a Viking. He doesn't really have any intentions of going anywhere else. And I think he proved early on in the season that he was playing at a high level. Oh, yeah. And I think the as much as we don't want to admit it, I think the Aaron Rodgers narrative might be helping Kirk's case a little bit uh, because we can – we can let Rodgers take all of the the glitz and the glam and the you know all the interviews of wow you came back in 75 days or whatever it was and Kirk can just quietly do the same thing mm-hmm. without all of the publicity and come back next September play like he was this September hopefully not like he was in the first couple of games cuz he was turning the ball over quite a bit but playing well, playing mm-hmm. kind of week four, five, six, seven, Kirk Cousins. And we were, I mean, we were saying MVP. He was entering that play. territory, like legitimately entering that territory. And he's he's always been. I mean, even going back to his days in Washington, he's always been uh, under the radar, heavily criticized. He's not. He's not this guy. He's not that guy. He's not a Tom Brady. He's not a Russell Wilson. He's not a whatever. Um, And I don't know. I I think he's still got football in him. I think think Kevin O'Connell really, really trusts him. Um, And I think they've worked well together. I think this offensive line they've built to protect Cousins, I think there's a lot of trust there as well. So I don't know. All of that to say – I don't know that they make a change per se. I think the change is we go back to Kirk next season. Interesting. Okay. Instead of I, I I've I think I've said this before and I would say it again. I don't know that you spend a draft pick, at least a high draft pick on a quarterback. I know mm-hmm. this is a very um it's a very quarterback heavy draft class, maybe one of the best. Uh, but I was having this conversation with somebody the other day like Who's to say that two years from now, the quarterback class won't be just as good, if not better? You know, why why do we have to, you know, burn everything down, get rid of everybody to bring in a new quarterback when we could keep rolling with something that's worked pretty re- pretty well, and then see what happens a couple uh, years down I, the road? I, I, I'm I'm taking your your cliff notes on. That's what the Bears need to do. Is <laughs> They need if they don't want Justin Fields, they don't don't need to draft you know someone quarterback wise that has failed them several times. They need to go out. They have the money, get a veteran quarterback. Not saying Kirk Cousins. I was just gonna <laughs> say but maybe Kirk. Cousins. They need they need a veteran quarterback. Pay the dude the money and get this get their this franchise the Bears franchise back on on you know scale here. Then you you get a rookie quarterback that can sit, learn, and and just just do it that way. I it shows with uh, the Packers. It shows with with the Patriots. That is a, 
I'd say the winning combination, let your draft pick rookie quarterback sit at least two years, let them learn the system, let them just, just learn the NFL game because it's much different than the college game. Mm-hmm. You see too often, and I'm not discrediting, there are, there are the good quarterbacks. I mean, CJ Stroud's having a phenomenal year in Houston. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought that. I mean, I thought he was a good quarterback, but I wouldn't have said that he was going to have the year he's having as a rookie, but that, that's few and far between. Mm-hmm. You, you, I think I, I like I like your idea. I think the Vikings should do it. I just don't know if they will with what Kirk Cousins. So you think? Uh, do you think Aaron Rodgers pulls a Brett Favre and leaves New York and then comes to Chicago? I mean, if the Ooh. money is there, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Bears could could swallow that pill. Though. He would well, literally own. I that mean, city. I mean. I don't think I just don't think the the relationships there to to make that happen. It would be rough. It would definitely be worse than when Brett Favre came to Minnesota. I, I think, think so. Yeah, yeah. We had somebody in our chat. I think it was the the Slav. Oh, Super Slav was that his name? Sounds right. I'm so sorry if you're listening. We love that you're here. Uh, come to our next live stream next game against the Raiders. Vikings Raiders. Yeah. yeah. Um. But I think it was him. He's a. I think he said he was in the Chicago area. Uh, he may even be a Bears fan. But he was saying like the Bears and Packers rivalry is so crazy, and the Vikings Bears rivalry doesn't even register to it Bears doesn't. fans. It, which is I, fine. It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, but yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> it's like saying I'm. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna throw a Mich- or a Michigan comment. That's like saying the Michigan Michigan State rivalry is as big as the Michigan Michigan Ohio State rival. It's just, there's there's no there's no mm-hmm. comparison. I mean, it, it's just not. It's a rivalry, but it's, there's two different levels. So yeah. Well, going back to my initial question um, about a quarterback change, um, KOC in his press conference, I think yesterday on Monday or on Monday, so two days ago, said something or alluded to the idea that any quarterback that's out there needs to be able to utilize your now healthy Justin Jefferson. They activated him today, yesterday? Yesterday. I think it was yesterday on Tuesday they activated him. He's good to go, which is awesome. That's super exciting. It's kind of crazy that we're this far into this episode and we haven't even mentioned that. Um, But any quarterback that you have starting – almost like the the biggest aspect of who cho- who you choose to start is who can best utilize Justin Jefferson, uh, which I agree with. He's the best player on the team. Justin Jefferson is. Um, at least the best player on offense. I think Daniel Hunter and Harrison Smith may have some some other comments about who the best player on the team is, but oh, I, I'm give, saying give JJ your, is. Josh Metellus, man. He's Josh Metellus is awesome. I don't think he's the best player on the team, but he's he, definitely amazing. He's, on there. he's up there. Um, but yeah. You guys are forgetting that one interception that Kirk threw early on in the season and JJ came back and just laid somebody out oh, on yeah. a tackle. <laughs> I think he could play defense yeah. pretty <laughs> yeah, well. Maybe, maybe. He's also been out for a while because... It's true. Uh, an injury that defenders probably wouldn't get. But, yeah, unless you're – it is a hamstring, so Xavier Rhodes probably would have been out for a 1,000 years because <laughs> of that injury. Um, we but don't need to talk about that. I think you can make the case for either Mullins or Hall. Um, Mullins has that – he's been a backup, but behind Kirk Cousins. So he's not going to be starting over Kirk. Um, but he's been in the meeting room. He's had his helmet on listening to everything on every game. Um, he has a similar athletic ability to Kirk Cousins, so the offense is already built around that. Um, Theoretically, he's really good and knowledgeable in the playbook and the ways that KOC wants to play the game. Jaron Hall, he's been on the team since he was drafted in April. He also has been in every meeting room, and he's been a guy behind Kirk Cousins and with his helmet on on the sidelines hearing everything. Um. But Hall, I think, is a little bit more mobile. So that's an aspect of the game that you could, another wrinkle you can throw in there in your decision of quarterback. So I wouldn't be upset with either of those. At this point, I would be upset if they threw Dobbs out there again. Yeah, I I mean, you, you raise up good points. You have so many, 
receiving weapons. And I'm not, I mean, then you add in Hogginson, the tight end, it just, it just blows my mind actually how, how many weapons you have. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe that is what you need is more of a, like a Kirk Cousins passing quarterback. I mean, the mobility, yeah, helped you a few few games, but then obviously it hurt you against uh, Denver and Chicago. So, and it's gonna it's gonna depend on the offensive line too. I mean, you you can't have another game like you did against the Bears, where they were just Swiss cheese, and there were all these holes and the quarterback ends up on the ground or throwing interceptions. And to that point, not to crap on Dobbs even more than we are, I already have this oh, episode. Go ahead and do it. Um, but I saw someone tweet, and I don't know who it was, um, that Dobbs' uh, mobility and his like liquidity, his movement around and outside of the pocket against that Bears defensive line may have really put a lot of strain on the tackles for sure. So if you're not going to stay in the pocket, it's hard to keep a clean pocket. If you don't know where your quarterback is, if you have a solid pocket quarterback, you know where you need to block, right? If you have a quarterback that could out of nowhere be running into you, it's hard to know where to block. So it makes your your job as an offensive tackle a lot harder mm. Um, which then adds some confusion and then can cause a sack or some pressure, which leads the quarterback to just throw a willy nilly interception. Um, so I think a pocket passer makes a lot of sense in the Vikings offense, just because it's more consistent and more predictable for the offensive line and it plays to their strengths. Um, it's agree. just when yeah, it's a good thing, point. Yep. When the things really fall apart, that's when running helps but only if they fall apart and you have a lane. Not if you get a little skittish and you see ghosts. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it'll it'll be a long week, I think, for the Vikings. Um, and who, who, who do you have for the after the bye week? Who's your Raiders. They go to Vegas. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. and who'd you say the Bengals? And They're both away games, both right? On the road. Yep. Okay. At Raiders, at Bengals. Sorry, I didn't mean if you were going to ask that question. but mm. No, I was no, just curious. Good. And then we've got that three-game divisional stint to end the season. Lions, yep. Packers, Lions. So That'll be tough. It's going to come down to those three games, and we've said this for a couple of weeks now. It's going to come down to those three games. Um, and now the Packers are kind of right in that mix. They're on the verge, yeah. unfortunately. The Vikings so, losing to the Bears gave I can't them some believe, help. I can't believe <laughs> the Packers... I can't believe they came and, and beat the Lions in Detroit on Thanksgiving. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, besides the first quarter, I think the Lions played decent, but it is just too far to come back from. They, I, I just couldn't believe it when I watched that that game. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you've got some uh, information here from a fan. <laughs> yeah. I suppose we could a, call him a new Skull Hop follower, which we're <laughs> grateful for, Dustin Baker on Twitter. Um, today tweeted um, more of like I would say an educated guess uh, but it makes a lot of sense and I respect the opinion on what he thinks depending on like how the Vikings win or lose the next five games uh, going to the Raiders and the Bengals hosting the Lions going to Green Bay and then no, or, we've got Green Bay at home oh, okay New Year's Eve okay so Raiders and Bengals away hosting the Lions and the Packers and then finishing off Detroit. in Detroit yeah. away. Okay. So, Evan, do you want to read out what Dustin Baker thinks happens depending on the win totals? Yeah. So his tweet from today said, this is probably, in all caps, probably how the Vikings playoff fate would play out per record in the remaining five games. So if the Vikings win the next five games, they win the NFC North, which makes sense because they have to play the Lions twice. Mm-hmm. So you win both of those games, you almost automatically are winning the division. If they go 4-1, and one, they don't win the division, but they get the sixth seed, which is where they were going into the Bears game. And now I think they've slipped down to the seventh seed after losing to the Bears. Maybe they're still in the sixth Maybe. seed. Maybe. The only reason I would probably disagree with that is that Dustin tweeted this out today. True. So that was post Bears game. True. So again, this is a, a very it's educated guest on Dustin, but 
Well, and I'm I'm thinking through like if the season ended today, like that when you go to ESPN.com, mm-hmm. that's what the inf- that's the information you're gonna get. Yeah. Anyway, so four and one, they're the sixth seed in the NFC. Three and two, in the next five games, they get in the playoffs for sure, um, but probably a sixth, maybe a seventh seed. If they only win two of the next five games and go two and three. Uh, Dustin says they're scoreboard watching in week 18, which means it depends on other teams. Um, other teams would have to win and or lose for the Vikings to then get in. Uh, one and four. Nope. <laughs> oh, and five. Hell no. <laughs> so yes, uh, I, I definitely agree with that assessment of, uh, the Vikings playoff hopes here. Um, I think the five games are winnable. Um, and we've gone on a five game win streak before. I'm not going to say that we will win all five. I don't think that's realistic. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the toughest stretch of the Vikings schedule is behind with, I mean, we played Philly, Kansas city and San Francisco in the first eight weeks of the season. Mm -hmm. So to have those huge games behind us and to have won one of them, um, I think you feel pretty good as a Vikings team going into the bye and then going into these final five games. I think they make the playoffs. That's my prediction. Yeah. As of right now, I think they do too. Uh, Dustin followed that tweet up by saying, regardless, like if they make the playoffs, they're probably going to Detroit or going to San Francisco on the wild card weekend. Obviously, if they win the division, they'll host a playoff game, but they'd be one of the lower seeded division winners so they would probably only host one if they win the 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 south would be the Mm. lowest Uh, probably yeah so their their leader doesn't have a even a 500 (laughs) record so um yeah i highly respect dustin's opinions there um again i know that they're probably just or it's all probably you know it's a highly educated guess Uh, So there's no guarantees on what happens regardless of wins and losses there. But I think at the moment, and I may be wrong on this, but I think at the moment both the Vikings and the Lions hold their own destiny still, even after the Vikings lost to the Bears. Um, I think if the Vikings win out, they will win the division because that means they have beat the Lions twice, they have beat the Packers twice, and they split with the Bears among all the other Um, conference and division wins that they have so far I think all of that hinges on what is now the most important decision of the Viking season and that is who starts at quarterback Um, I just think off playbook equity you have to make the change and you have to go with either Mullins or Hall it's just which one of those and I've said it before on this podcast I trust the coaches I talk it's technically talking crap about KOC's game management style, but I trust him. I just hope he makes a confident, yes, we're going with Nick, or yes, we're going with Jaron. So, so so both of you expressed that you want to change. So who do you want? Do you want Hall or do you want Mullins? I, uh, based on what you're given right now, just just what what's your gut feeling well, and, and I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter. I I tend to maybe land in your category a little bit, Austin. Like, yeah, I'll I'll trust the coaches. I I think I don't think there's a wrong decision necessarily. There is. The wrong decision <laughs> is to not make a change. But 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 you guys have both said you want to change. Well, so to be clear, I'm asking Evan, I'm asking that you guys can split. I yeah. didn't say that Evan I wanted to say I didn't say that I wanted Dobbs out uh i i still wonder if for the sake of consistency for the sake of chemistry for the sake of um you know giving the guy a a chance which we have um to some extent and you know he's he's not played well the last couple of games not as well as he did the first two games that he played for the Vikings, but game and a half game and a half sure whatever but I, i i don't know i I wonder if that's still an option on the table. Do you keep him in there? Uh, maybe it's the the least popular decision, and maybe it gets a ton of flack on Twitter. But, I mean, gosh, if you throw Dobbs in there, who cares what people say on Twitter? If we win, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. 
if they come out at any point and announce, yeah, Josh is still our guy, I can tell you right now, my personal Austin's opinion, I'm furious. I respect your your thought process, and I'm not saying anything about you, but I'd be pretty. I, upset. I, I I'm I'm gonna wager that Dobbs is gonna be the starter for wow. for week fourteen. I I just don't see how your organization after you know let him play for for what four games or whatever is just gonna be a switch i i just don't see it i could be wrong you guys know your organization better than i do but i just don't see it i would i would just add one final stat to the quarterback conversation josh dobbs has two wins nick mullins as a starter for the vikings well he uh did he start against the bears last uh, no, I think Kirk did. No. No, oh, did they bench the starters? Yeah, I think one of the, the funny, cool stats to throw out is the Vikings haven't had a single quarterback start two straight seasons worth of games since Fran Tarkenton, and I think that still holds true. I'm pretty sure the Bears-Vikings game we attended of last, last year? year. What? In Chicago. Of last year? Yeah, it was... It was Last last season, I think you need to look that up and bring it up next. <laughs> next we'll, I'm we'll pretty have to confident. fact check that. I think I think Nick Mullins started that game. I feel like Kirk started and then Nick came in in the second half. I, I I'd say it's worth it to even pull that up right now and look it up. All right. Um, well, re- even so, even if he did, even if he did, and I'll look this up. But even if Nick did start that game in Chicago, Josh Dobbs has one more win mm-hmm. as a starter. And Jaron Hall has zero wins yeah. as a starter currently, yeah. so I, I think there's there's some merit there. And now, I'll, I'll but, say, but the Bears were playing to lose last year. Yeah, yeah that true. was the number one <laughs> pick of the draft yeah. potentially. So, and I'll say, even if I'm correct in saying Nick Mullins has that one win under his belt as a Viking, it's all a moot point because yeah, Jaron Hall doesn't have as many wins. He doesn't have as much opportunity. Same for Nick Mullins. So. You're you're not wrong. We can't take those wins away from Josh Dobbs. Those were fun. It was exciting. The Pastronaut era, those two weeks was really fun until it wasn't. My if if it made me decide, which don't ever make me decide, I should never do that. That's why I, I'm not the coach or GM of the Vikings. But if you made me decide right now, I would quick twitch lean towards Nick Mullins. His play style is the most similar to Kirk Cousins not saying he is Kirk Cousins but he probably he, fits better he's been in the, the offense the system the longest Kirk started that game did he seriously yeah Kirk started and Mullins finished are you looking at the right game this is last year 29 to 13 no is that the at, week, week at 17 Chicago. or week 18 January 8th Interesting. Okay. 2023 we All were right. there we went to this game but, but, but I would agree with you Austin if you're choosing, I, I would say Mullins just because he's been in the system the longest. I mean, what's the worst going to happen? Yeah, you, you play him a, a, a series and if or two, and he looks like crap. Mm-hmm. You put someone else in. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, so I, I'll eat. I'll eat it. I was wrong. I'm. I'm so sorry, faithful listeners. You, <laughs> I'll, I'll do better. I really will. Don't. Don't leave just because I was wrong. But I was wrong. You got me. Um, I wasn't yep. out to get you. No, that's okay. It's all out of love. I'm just, I'm just trying to prove a point here that you, you you've been smiling ever Josh, since you showed. Josh me. <laughs> Dobbs has more wins okay. than Hall and Mullins as a starter. And I've been on record saying the only stat that matters is wins. I don't care if you throw for a million yards. What were your wins? Like, I, all that matters is wins. So, yep. to that point, you're right. I still say they need to make the change. I respect you mm. for saying maybe they don't have to, but. If it was up to me, that would have already been publicly announced. We've sufficiently gotten nowhere in this <laughs> debate. <laughs> we'll agree to agree with my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll just uh, surrender to whatever Kevin O'Connell decides. Which is all we can do, because exactly. we're just three dudes sitting in Iowa. And I don't care about the Vikings, so <laughs> two dudes that actually care with KOC. So Fair just want to put that on there. Fair point. Well, we'll probably have plenty to talk about next week, even though it is the bye week. Um, 
there will likely be some news. I mean, we'll we'll have to know who's practicing and who's taking those first team mm-hmm. reps. And um, obviously, JJ coming back is a big storyline as well. So we'll have plenty to talk about. We don't plan to take a week off, even though the team is not playing. Uh, we'll have an episode next week, and we'll we'll keep rolling, and we'll look yeah. ahead to the the Raiders game uh in that next episode as well but um we uh we had a little little moment on apple Podcasts that i think you wanted to share Clay. yeah so we are you can find us everywhere you find your favorite podcast even on youtube you can be watching us and looking at my beautiful face right now um or you can listen on apple podcasts and wherever you listen please give us a review that would be greatly appreciated um tell us what we're doing right uh, if you think we're doing a lot wrong, that's okay, but don't leave a review. Just like tweet at us or something, <laughs> and then we'll try to fix it. And then you can leave us a review saying a five star review saying that we fixed it. But we got a five star review. So uh, admittedly, I pretty early on went on Apple Podcasts <laughs> and just left a non word review. I just hit the five stars. I was and, wondering who the second yeah. one was. So me, I, I gave a non worded five star review. Pretty pretty biased review. <laughs> Um, but someone else gave us uh, a little little sentence. Uh, so on Apple Podcast, uh, I'm gonna butcher this because I don't know how to how to say this. Say this, but um, Joe Stimel Time S uh, gave us a review titled Two Great Guys." Oh, thanks. Uh, and then he said, "What else can you say but skull and beer and beer?" And that sums up our entire podcast, except for the two episodes where we have invited somebody from enemy territory on i appreciate that uh he has said skull before forrest has said skull before one time and i was there and i i will never forget it uh usually Forrest what was the you, what was the context on i'm that, sure you had had a few of those yeah exactly a few of those beverages it had nothing to do with with the vikings being better than <laughs> the bears or anything like that is you it still a random it. you still said it um uh, but we've enjoyed many beers together, so at least half of the podcast you can you can enjoy. Um, so yeah, if you two think we're doing a good job, please go out to wherever you listen to us. Um, leave us a review. Tweet at us. If you think we can do better, let us know outside of reviews. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool to see a to see a comment on there. Yeah, yeah, we definitely appreciate it, and we'd love to hear from you in any medium: a review, an email. A tweet, a comment, mm-hmm. we'll uh, we'll get back to you. And where can they do all that? Pretty much anywhere. I mean, if you're on the internet, yeah, you probably find us somewhere. We uh, we're Is on MySpace still open. Uh, <laughs> Oof, we're not I on need that to get one. On that, yeah, <laughs> but we'll, we can resurrect that. Yeah. I was on MySpace <laughs> way back in the day. Uh, but no, we're on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, uh, YouTube. We have a newly operational website. We do have our own website, and we own the domain. Yeah. So, theskullhop.com. You do have to type in www. Yeah. It doesn't work if you don't do that. www.theskullhop.com. And uh, you'll find everything you need to from there. Yeah, including this episode. It'll be posted there. (laughs) And uh, along with... Just some other information about us and links to everything else as well. So, yep. hey, we're on Snapchat too. So oh, yeah. Come find us on Snapchat. <laughs> the School Hop. That's that's our name everywhere. All right. What do we think of this beer? The Arms Race from Big Grove. I've been nursing mine. I had a hole in my mug. Uh, yeah, yeah there, was, there was a hole in mine too. I've been empty since before we started talking about Dustin Baker's tweets. <laughs> but um, it's it's good. I that's like why I've very been good, savoring Very good it. selection. Yeah. Big Grove does it well. Yeah, so thank you, Big Grove. We enjoyed your beer. Uh, we've had your other beers on here before. We'll have many of yours again. Forrest, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, yeah. thanks, guys. I really do appreciate this. Hopefully uh, next year, uh, if this continues on, you'll have me on for the, the Bears yeah. broadcast. I, I do enjoy – I mean, I, I, I watch the Vikings enough to understand your love for them. They they are a good football team. They've had some bad luck this year. Um but uh, I won't say skull. But <laughs> you uh, just did. <laughs> yeah, I said I won't say it. <laughs> but um, good luck. I mean, I, I think you're a playoff bound team this year. So good luck to you guys. Thank you. Thanks. And you've been to you've physically been to more Vikings games than Bears games, at least in the last year. Or so. In the in the last two years, I have yeah. been to 
more Vikings games <laughs> than Bears games, unfortunately. So, all right, man. Well, until next time. Until next time. Skull. Skull. Cool. Cool.